Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my, I think my second or third live stream, live stream, my second or third Q&A ever on the channel. I don't like to do them too often. We have Wixie in the background. She's going to be uh, asking me the questions. I have no idea what they are and we're just gonna do it off the top of the dome. Let's dive right into it. Wix, hook us up. How do you handle a busy lifestyle while being in a relationship on top of moving and still find time to do Nick Bear's program? You're starting with that. Mm -hmm. How do I handle a busy lifestyle and, and maintain my relationships? and do Nick Bear's program. <laughs> Depends on the stage you're at with your business because sometimes, or in the beginning, you you don't have time to do things because when you're kicking things off and, and they're just getting started and you don't have any momentum, you really can't have a balanced life. A couple of my mentors talk about how you don't have work-life balance, you have work-life integration. If you travel a lot, for example, let's say you were in Spain, most of us would just think of going to a new country would be like a vacation. But if you're an entrepreneur or you have your own business or you're a freelancer or whatever, can't really take just a whole bunch of time off necessarily. So for example, if you were in Spain, you would go and find a cafe and enjoy the atmosphere of Spain, bring everything in, the smells, the, the sights and stuff like that, but also get work done at the same time. So it's really business and life integration and th there's really no such thing as work-life um, balance. But there are stages in your business where you do have momentum, where you can kind of chill and stuff like that. Me right now, I'm kind of in a weird stage where I could kind of chill and and, and, and be a little bit more easy on things. But now with the start of, of Waylon and really trying to grow that brand and grow my cinematography course, I'm finding myself not really having too much free time for myself. So there's really not a lot of balance. And luckily Wix is working at home. She doesn't work at a certain location. So we get to spend time together. She has a lot more flexibility with her hours and stuff. So luckily we get to spend a lot of time. But earlier in our relationship, we had a lot of arguments because I was so busy and I couldn't really spend the kind of time that I wanted to with her. So there was definitely a lot of arguing in the beginning and, and just over time we just had more and more conversations about it and we're kind of now in an, an understanding and agreement and she knows what I'm trying to do and I know what she's trying to do and it just flows well. But I'm lucky that she works from home now so now we're kind of spending time working together. So someone said you said college was a rough time for you. How so and how did you make how did it make you stronger as a person? In school. In school. Drop out. Okay. <laughs> Can I say that? Sophomore year, sophomore year, I was so close to dropping out. I was so depressed sophomore year. That was like when things really hit hard for me and I was just, I was really just hating. I was hating my life, absolutely hating it. I think for someone, for you struggling in school, looking back at myself now and knowing that it wasn't me because I would blame myself like if a girl rejected me or if I didn't have friends I would blame myself but it wasn't me it was just the types of people that I was around and I just happened to not connect and vibe with those people. If I had a really, really good group of friends in college, even though I didn't like the educational aspect of it and my interests were somewhere else, college would have been a much different experience. It, it basically would have been high school for me. So I think telling yourself that it's not your fault, it's not you as a person, it's just the people that you're meeting, they're just not meant to be your friends and that's perfectly okay. So. After learning that, I kind of just like, I forgave myself after school and it, it just, it made me have a new perspective in life. And any type of suffering that you're going through right now is just lessons that you're learning to be able to help the person that is going through what you're going through now. That was not a dad response. That's not it. It's not what I meant. Ready? 
<clears throat> You're fired. <laughs> do you ever hit a creator's block and feel uninspired? If so, how do you get over it? Every single day. <laughs> no, not every day. But it, it happens a handful of times. Like today, today was a kind of a tough day for me mentally. Actually creatively too, because I was trying to film, film something and it just wasn't working and I was trying to force it. So I just stopped and I decided to do this Q&A instead and I feel a lot better doing it. And I just like talking to you guys, you know. When I am personally in just a rut, it's best to not think about being creative. You know, it's kind of like when someone tells you not to think about something, what do you think about? You think about that thing. So I just, I just try to distract myself and I, I turn on some TV or, you know, I get lost in some other kind of work. Uh, I'll go to the gym, I'll listen to music. Music is really, really big. And as soon as I just kind of get lost in my own little world without overthinking and being inside my head, um, that's when the ideas come flowing, when I'm in kind of that zen state. So my advice to you is don't think about being creative. Try to do the opposite and just, just be present in the moment and, and just get lost in something and the creative ideas will come flowing. How do you define success? Day to day, one year, 10 years? So a successful day to me, uh, I think I've talked about this before, maybe not on the channel, but I do this thing and it's, I didn't create it, it's from a book called That One Thing, but literally I go to bed every single night, I write down the one thing I have to get done the next day and then everything else is just icing on the cake. So I'll write down in my calendar and I'll color code it and stuff like big, nice and bold. Like that's the one thing that's gonna make me progress. Once I complete that, the day is, it's a success and everything else I do is just little bonuses. Uh, so that's my, that's my one day success. A one year success is I like to look back at what I was posting and what I was doing and if I'm like kind of cringing at it, especially film, film work, like if you cringe at your old videos from a year ago, you are making massive progression because we tend to uh, compare ourselves a lot to other people, especially through social media, it's, it's killer. If you just look at your own work and you're cringing at your, your old work from a year ago or maybe even six months ago, um, that's a huge win, that's a huge, huge success. So that would be my one year success. 10 year success, I don't like to look that far into the future and I have a, I have a vision, um, Lewis Howes always, nails home that point and gotta have a vision it's true i used to hate when he asked me that question hey what's your what's your vision um because i would never have a good answer and that is okay to not have a good answer is okay it just means you're not there yet but you will when, at the time he asked me you know I, I had a generic vision but it wasn't super specific and now if he asked me that again i would have a much better answer um, and just be more confident with with my answer as well um, i definitely like to have a vision for the next five years the next 10 years but at the same time being open to that vision changing because even just last year i had no idea i was gonna start this backpack company Wayland or even have an online course you know so your vision changes and you got to be okay with that it's been awesome seeing you and Lewis House collab on many different projects for a while now as well as be a mentor for you how would you describe Zach before meeting Lewis versus now having made all these life-changing decisions moving to like seeing your own company and doing cinematography courses what plans do you have moving forward the time that I met Lewis, I was at a point in my life where it was either like show up to play ball or go sit on the bench. It's not even just Lewis, it was just really that point in my life because I was kind of just stagnant and and I, I kind of knew what I had to do, but I just, I wasn't taking the necessary action, really diving deep and going for it. I was kind of going for it, but I was, I was playing it a little bit too safe. So before I met Lewis, 
I was making really nice progress with my YouTube channel and I was, I was doing the things that I thought I needed to do, but I was living with my parents. You know, I had no bills to pay. I had a, a very comfortable life. I had no bills to pay and I was making good money from my personal training and my freelance work. And at the time my freelance work was like kind of lower than my personal training and maybe, maybe just even. Actually, no, just, just about even. So me, after I met Lewis, I put myself in scary and uncomfortable situations that I know make me uncomfortable at this very moment, but in the future, it's going to impact my life drastically. So being extremely uncomfortable, giving myself that do or die mentality because uh, when I was younger and living with my parents, I, you know, I had it really easy growing up, super easy. You know, I made every single team that I played. I got through high school without trying. I had friends, like everything I did, it, it just came easy to me. And I was spoiled as a kid, you know, my, my, I, I was very comfortable living at home. And so I had to create this artificial fire in my gut this artificial do or die mentality even though I had a subconscious comfort because if I failed I could always just fall back on my parents so time after Lewis I tried to I've created that do or die mentality you know I've moved across the US um, I have tons of bills I live in a nice apartment and Everything that I do, I have to get myself and be competitive and fight for it. And I think that's that's kind of the, the new me. How long have we been going? Like 20 minutes? Yeah. Fuck. And we've only took three questions. Hi. <sighs> Might as well go 30 minutes. Make it like 50 minutes. Maybe, maybe this is a podcast episode. <laughs> we've got to start that podcast. Guys. If you want me and Wix to start a podcast, no guests, maybe some guests, but really just like, I need a platform to like just spit and like, and just talk and have no filter. YouTube, I still have a little bit of filter because there needs to be a story and I need to align things properly so everything flows and makes sense. I need a, plat a platform where I can just talk my ass off and just go nuts. So let me know in the comments if me and Wix should have that podcast and, and do that, so. What's one thing that drives you to do better? Having the mentors that I have that are all doing better than me. So surrounding myself with those people and having those people really be the only people that I even like think about and follow on social media, it forces me to get up in the morning and just be tunnel vision and know exactly what I need to do and just and just keep getting it done because I know that they're doing that and they're already ahead of me. And so I'm trying to catch up and and, and, and play at their level. And it's just inspiring. It's not really, I don't want to say competitive. It is, there's definitely com a competitiveness, uh, but not really because all those guys are, are way ahead of me and I'm like the underdog. At least that's how I, I see it. But, um, you know, I'm trying to, it's like almost like a chase and it just keeps me hungry. How has your workflow changed since you started and what good habits have you noticed made it better and more efficient? This changes quite a bit. For the most part, knowing, like I said, knowing that one thing um, and writing it down before I go to bed every single night has changed my workflow drastically and has made me progress and, and just increase my, my execution. Like I execute on things way more efficiently now. Time blocking is something that I go back and forth on. Right now I am time blocking because I have so much stuff going on between Waylon and my courses and freelance work and just my personal brand and like everything that I have to time block and schedule out my time to the T or I'm just gonna go freaking insane. Um, so that's what I'm doing right now. But the number one thing I can tell you is journaling. Journaling has totally changed my life. Um, I've been journaling for the past year now and I've taken some huge um, advice from Rob Deerdeck and the way he journals. He takes it to a totally different analytical level. Like he's got statistics on like when he poops, when he showers, like literally everything. I am not that intense with it, but you know, tracking things like my motivation on a scale from one to 10, 
uh, every single morning has changed my drive and my motivation. Remembering like just an extremely grateful moment. A lot of people tell you you have to be grateful for five things and write them all down. I believe that to a degree. I don't think you have to follow that exactly. I think you need to do it in your own way. And my own way is to just think of a really, really nice moment that I had in my childhood or maybe with sports or something that I'm just like, wow, I'm like I'm so grateful that I had that moment. And then I write down a, a huge goal. It could be like a daily goal or short term or long term, something that I really want to accomplish and then something that I want to change that I don't like that I, something that I don't like that I'm doing right now that I can change that will help me in business or just becoming a better human being. So journaling is, is major. Do you compare yourself to other filmmakers and therefore sometimes doubt yourself in any way? Um, yes, 100%. I compare myself to other filmmakers and it's definitely a problem and I think a lot of people do it and they don't talk about it. I, it tends to interfere with my vision on like how I like to create. For example, if I see something that's like really trendy on YouTube and and people are just like loving it and eating it up and the video's going viral, but it's just so not my style, it makes me think like, do I need to change my style to match theirs to get a bigger audience on YouTube? I just go into this like dark downhill spiral of, of negative thoughts um, when I see videos like that doing well and just like people eating it up. And I think if you're one of those people that look at videos and you're like, oh my God, like that's so dumb. How is that getting views? And you're just kind of seeing yourself hate like that. You have two choices. One choice is you block those people and you stop following them and you just kind of get them out of your head. That's totally fine and okay. Second option is you watch them. It, it could be your friend, it could be competition, it could be whatever. And you watch them and you applaud them and you say, hey, like, good for them. I'm so happy for them that they are getting the recognition. I'm sure that video took a really, really long time to produce. I'm, I'm just thrilled that they are, are getting that recognition. If you think about it in that way, it just kind of puts some, some good vibes out into the universe and, and um, those vibes always will come back to you. Did I see myself where I am right now? The short answer to that is hell no. The long answer to that is, you know, kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about the vision always changing. Like, you know, in the beginning, I just wanted to have a lot of people watching my videos. And that was the way I determined success is if I get this many subscribers and this many views. Now it's changed. Like, yes, I, I would love to have a bigger audience and, and get more subscribers and get more views, but that isn't determining my success anymore. It's the impact that I'm actually making on, on real people because you guys watching this right now are real people and I think YouTubers forget that the people that watch their videos are actual real people. When I started my first cinematography course a handful of months back and I got on live with my first module and saw some of you guys actually face to face and have a conversation, I was like, oh my God, like this is real. Like these are real people. I have to bring my A game for basically wasting people's time. So the cinematography course, become a world traveling filmmaker, that's not coming out again until early 2019, unfortunately. But um, I'm creating a brand new course that's on the business side of freelance filmmaking and becoming financially free through social media, how much to charge, how to set up contracts, how to get big time clients, and then also how to create multiple revenue streams using your personal brand. A lot of, a lot of awesome stuff that's gonna make you financially free. So the course is, is built to declare you financially free. So that course will be coming out um, mid-November. Date is to be determined, but I'm really stoked about that one. And it's gonna be huge, so. 
That is the end of the Q&A. I think we crushed it. I hope you guys got something from it. Big things happening with Waylon, the t-shirts, the water bottles. I'll be showing you all the behind the scenes. Episode 14 of Rambling Road, probably coming out Monday, and I'll see you guys then. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Uh, work so fucking much, my greatest fear is I'ma die alone Every diamond in my chain, yeah, that's a milestone I'm loving it, I'm People loving it. calling me, asking me for money, man uh, The only thing I'ma give you motherfuckers is yeah. a dial flash